This is Twit. Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent. Look, as a geek myself, I feel it's only fair if I admit something. We can be kind of hard to shop for. So what do you get for that geek in your life who has everything already? Well, a Club Twit gift subscription, of course. Twit podcasts keep them informed and entertained with the most relevant tech news podcasts available. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad-free, exclusive outtakes, behind the scenes and special content, and I love this, exclusive shows like my own Hands on Mac and Hands on Windows from Paul Therott, as well as the Untitled Linux Show. So purchase your geek's gift at twit.tv slash club twit, and they will thank you every day. The year of artificial intelligence. <laughs> I wouldn't be it surprised at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, a year I, from now, it could be totally possible that we're listening or watching podcasts with AI hosts. It, it just might happen. Honestly, and if, if not fully, um, in fact, this already happens. There is a service that will uh, take in enough of your uh, voice to then kind of help make edits so you can just type in a word maybe that you got wrong <sighs> and it uses what it knows about you to put the right word in um that is wow, not what we're talking about today though that's amazing though <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty cool uh speaking of the amazement that is ai uh i am very excited to be joined today by joshua browder the ceo of do not pay do not pay welcome to the show thank you for having me yeah it is such a pleasure to get you on um it was fascinating the other day. I was uh, looking through Twitter uh, as I was kind of, you know, trying to figure out what story I wanted to cover this week on the show. And I came across one of your tweets and thought, well, there it is. And so I reached out and uh, happy to see that you were able to join us. Before we get into kind of the specific topic this week, I was hoping you could tell us about Do Not Pay in general, because you've been around, you know, and uh, if folks haven't heard of you or maybe heard about you uh, a little bit, but are curious what Do Not Pay does. Could you tell us about that? Do Not Pay is the world's first robot lawyer. And what I mean by that is it's software that helps ordinary people fight for their legal rights. And that includes things like fighting parking tickets, getting refunds, canceling subscriptions, all of the areas that are just attacks on our everyday life. I started the company five years ago because I got a bunch of parking tickets myself. And I realized lawyers were charging hundreds of dollars an hour for things that can easily be handled by technology. So do not pay is almost like David and David versus Goliath. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, I mean, speaking, you, you said, you know, you got some parking tickets and you kind of had this um, revelation that A, the lawyers, the solicitors were paying or were uh, charging a lot of money uh, for something that, you know, maybe didn't need that. Can you speak more to that? like? I thought that, you know, lawyers, they go to school for so many years and they are uh, very knowledgeable about how this all goes. But when you start to dig into it, a lot of what's uh, in the law is just a matter of filing the right forms, right? Exactly. But they make it so hard for people. That some forms are even in Latin, even in the United States. Wow. And really, it's just a decision tree. You just go down the tree, find the right defense and then make that defense. And that helps a lot of people. So that's where the robot lawyer comes into play. The, as, as uh, your site, you know, says the, the sense is that you can have the robot sort of go through that decision tree for you with, uh, with the site. Yes. But over the past few years, it was really a rules based robot, which meant if this happened, you should do this. But now we're moving into the AI based robot where the robot decides uh, instantly what to do, and there's not a set rule about which way it should go. And that has allowed us to pursue much higher levels of disputes and negotiate against companies like Comcast. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So you are uh, getting into uh, GPT-3, large language models. Um, round about when did Do Not Pay uh, start using artificial intelligence as part of the process? And of course, if you could tell us a little bit more about how you are using AI. We've always used it a bit, um, mainly to find a correct defense in, with machine learning models about what works best. 
But recently, we started using it to actually communicate with the companies and the governments. About a year ago, OpenAI released this amazing GPT-3 API, and that's allowed us to hold a conversation with these companies. Um, we spent the past year heads down building this technology. And about a week ago, we tried it for the first time against Comcast. And in my opinion, this is the first ever bill that was successfully lowered just with AI. The AI wow. is really good at holding the conversation, but not necessarily about the laws. So we've had to retrain it with all the laws. Yeah, so let, let's talk about that because um, you have this great video uh, on your on your Twitter where you show the chatbot bill negotiating um, with the with the agent on the other side, be that you know a chat bot itself at first and then becoming a person. Um, but this is this is something that I think is important for folks to understand. I was hoping you could talk about kind of the difference between uh, chat GPT, which we've talked about on the show before, uh, where you can go into that system and kind of ta uh, type in some questions and get answers versus this where you're using the API. And, you know, it, when the live agent is saying things, it's not spitting out strange answers uh, that you can sometimes get when you're using chat GPT. So does that mean that there's a way for you to kind of train the system? And if so, how how do you go about doing that um, as a company? Do you do you use your own personal records of how things have gone in the past? Or do you have a team that collects this data and uh, tries to train the model on that? I'm just curious about the whole process there in general and why uh, this specific version, um, you know, by way of do not pay, uh, seems to have successfully negotiated down a bill. Yes. Yeah, so to your point, so chat GPT is a consumer product that um, anyone can go and chat with. And it's, it's a cool product, but I don't see it having any practical use case because it actually makes up a lot of answers. Um, it, it kind of BSs a lot. Um, but in contrast, <laughs> the, the same technology is available to businesses through an API, um, the OpenAI GPT-3 API, and there's one called DaVinci as well. And that's really great because you can retrain it. And so what we've done is we said, based on the past 10,000 cases um, that do not pay process, write a letter based on that. And then it not only has its language training about holding a conversation, but it also has the legal training um, to actually get the right result. And that's why our, if, if uh, we were processing this Comcast dispute through regular chat GPT, it wouldn't work because it would just mm. make up a uh, fluff but because we've retrained it, it's a lot better. I should say that it's not perfect. If you go into the actual chat uh, that we did, it's too polite. It keeps saying thank you, even when uh, you don't necessarily should be saying that. Oh, man. that's Now, see, that is fascinating to me because you have this, this chat bot that in in sort of trying to fill out the process, you end up having to to make it a little bit meaner, I guess, is <laughs> when it comes to uh, the training, how does one go about doing that? I mean, I, I've never seen the API uh, and, and kind of how that all works. Are there sliders you can use to say, be less kind? Or is it about training it um, with phrases and with responses that uh, have a little bit more roughness to it, or just, I guess, pull back on the thank yous. Is there a way to tell it, hey, don't say thank you so much, cool it. <laughs> so you're going to have to, we, we believe we're going to have to have multiple AI models um, in this conversation. So oh. after the chat, after the open AI uh, model is done with its response, we need to have another model saying, does this even need a response at all? Um, and that's what we're doing to kind of prevent it from saying thank you all the time. Um, and, and that seems to have worked when we're launching this in the next two weeks publicly. Beyond that, also, the AI is very manipulative. Um, it, it actually lied to Comcast. We didn't tell it that there were service outages. It just made that up. And <sighs> as a company with legal liability, we don't want it making up stuff. So we're having to rein in, make it, make it more honest, I should say. <laughs> now, that is fascinating because... I don't know. I, there, there's a, a friend of mine named Bika, uh, Bika Sergeant, and uh, you know maybe he has has been a little dishonest in those uh, systems before. To you know the the outage is not as bad as uh, it, you know 
as it, he may have said. So it's definitely a human technique for sure to say, oh, that's the end of the world. My internet isn't working and uh, it hasn't worked for three weeks and I just need it fixed. When in fact, it's just been out for the last 15 minutes and you're wondering if they're going to get it back online. So I can't blame it uh, for choosing to be a little dishonest or I don't even know if you can you know, consider it choosing, but um, it's fascinating that that's something that you have to consider. And that is kind of the the way of looking at this from the the perspective of a company using these tools as opposed to an individual where as you pointed out you have to consider uh that liability and uh you know this isn't part of the original questions i was going to ask you but i am curious um how much of what you do ends up more being about we have to rein this in or we have as as you've been experimenting with ai how much of the solutions that you're having to do are more about kind of liability and concern over what could uh, go wrong as opposed to just letting the magic happen i would say that it's mainly to just placate the twitter reply guys who say oh you're being so <laughs> dishonest there's not actually any serious liability with telling Comcast that the internet's barely working because in most cases it, it does barely work. Um, I, I would also say that these disputes aren't rocket science. Um, they're just such a drain on our lives, like it, spending three hours dealing with Comcast uh, uh, over yeah. a $20 bill. And so that's the perfect job for software. So all of the ethics experts who say this is the end of the world, I would disagree with them. I would say that this just takes a lot of stress off people's plates. Yeah, especially around the holiday season, for goodness sake. I can, you know, be focusing on that instead of the bill that's suddenly gone up. Now, um, the the tweet that I had mentioned earlier that caught my eye um, was from you, and it says, uh, anyone with a speeding ticket hearing coming up, please DM me. We want to build a do not pay bot that listens to the court hearing via your AirPods and whispers what to say with GPT-3 and large language models. We just want to experiment and we'll pay the ticket even if you lose. I love that someone responded and said, um, I kind of want to get a speeding ticket on purpose just so I can participate. Uh, I definitely thought this is so interesting. Um, so tell us more about this idea uh, of, of sort of having legal defense available on the fly by way of chat GPT, or, or I should say GPT-3. So our corporate negotiation product and government negotiation product that we were just talking about will be available publicly to everyone and they can go crazy with it. But this is separately an experiment where we want to be the first people in history to have a robot fully represent someone in a US courtroom. And so when we posted that, the lawyers started going crazy. They said, <laughs> you can go to jail, all of this stuff. But we were like, guys, there must be some place in the US where it's not illegal to have AirPods in, in your ears. They might just not have written the rules. And so after I posted that tweet, about 300 people DM me with speeding tickets. And our legal team is just going through finding wow. where can we do this in a legal way to be the first <sighs> company to do this. That is amazing. And I cannot wait to see that play out because I will tell you, um, we every week have a meeting where we kind of go over what's going to be happening in the given week. And I, uh, at the time I said, oh, I'm going to be reaching out to do not pay. This is when I saw your tweet and I had not yet reached out to you. I said, I'm going to be reaching out to do not pay. And then mentioned that thing. And at least three people in the meeting were like, oh, is that even, can they even do that? Is that going to be like, can you do that? And so it is really fascinating to hear you talk about that a little bit more. And yes, I'm sure somewhere there's got to be uh, a place where this can, this can happen. And uh, <laughs> I just love the idea <laughs> of it whispering. Now say this to the judge. Um, um, so uh, now I guess uh, the final question I have for you here, uh, any few, I mean, you, you clearly are, are coming up with this inspiration left and right. Any future uses of GPT-3 that you and the team are thinking about that you can share, uh, with, with the listeners, uh, any possibilities there? So we're working on this, uh, AI lawyer feature called tag along. And what it does is it just follows you around and every company you interact with, it just like harasses them for like refunds and discounts and things like that. So we're going from a uh, proactive where the consumer goes to the AI and says, lower my Comcast bill to reactive where the AI is just sitting on your shoulder as the general counsel for the consumer protecting them. And I think that's very powerful and can save people a lot of money.
That's amazing. I've got a little, I mean, they, Comcast sees as a little devil on my shoulder. I see it as a little angel on my shoulder and it's saying, yeah, bro, your bill could be at least $30 lower if you did this. That's pretty cool. Um, of course, folks can head to do not pay. And in fact, if you head to do not pay and uh, click at the top where it says top features, you can see just some of the possible things do not pay can be used for. You've got so many different options listed on the site for uh, how do not pay can help. Uh, so of course, as I mentioned, folks can head there to learn more about Do Not Pay. But if they want to follow you online and maybe stay up to date with this um, AirPods court saga thing, where should they go to do so? I'm very active on Twitter, jbrowder1. And if you follow me there, you can see all the lawyers saying I'll be going to jail. <laughs> Brilliant <laughs> and wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it.